Hey YouTube, uh, I just wanted to make a kind of a, a video here of some stuff that I like, uh, that I don't like, and then kind of give a, a comparison kind of between um, this Kubota, uh, this 5200 versus the 4052M of, uh, that John Deere offers, which would be pretty comparable to this tractor. And, um, and also just a short kind of comparison uh, between their BH92 uh, in Kubota and then I think it's the 285 that John Deere offers um, for the 4052M or R or, um, and, and then those same models. Um, one thing um, that I do like about Kubota um, is, is I do like how they have a, have the, have the metal hood uh, versus John Deere's plastic hood. Um, I mean, I, I worked for John Deere for a number of years and I can tell you that I have watched them bounce a bowling ball off of off of their hoods um, to where versus you know if you drop a bowling ball or something hard on a Kubota hood, it's just going to dent, um, and there's nothing much you can do about it, um, you know. But but I, I one thing about the John Deere is is after a while it will get brittle, and it will fade, and I mean so will Kubota. I um, mean you know, I've seen I've seen a a 4052M we had uh, on the lot at, at a dealer one time sit there for two years and it just kind of sit in one spot and the paint did fade on that John Deere. And um, so, I mean, that, that's one thing uh, that, you know, obviously the Kubota is going to fade as well. Um, it's just going to fade a little bit uglier of a color. Uh, the Kubota will, will fade into like a kind of a pink color if you let it sit out too much. And that's that's one thing that I don't like about Kubota's paint is, uh, is it will fade into like a pink after a while. Um, another thing that I, that I really don't care for um, in this tractor, um, and this is the manual, this is the DT transmission, um, is where you have to stop. You have to completely stop, press the clutch pedal in to go from first to second. Um, I don't care for that. Um, I think that this should be uh, like a synchro shift where you can go from one to one to two, three and four um, without, without coming to a complete stop. Um, I just, I don't care for that at all. Um, but it is what it is. Um, another thing, that I don't like uh, about their DT model here um, is once again you have to press in the clutch pedal completely come to a complete stop um, to shift from forward to reverse and that's one thing that a John Deere definitely has over this Kubota like their 4052M in their uh, in their manual transmission that John Deere offers is they have the power shuttle um, and that's that's one thing that I definitely like about the John Deere and I think plenty of plenty of other people will like that um, as well uh, that John Deere offers the power shuttle uh, to where Kubota don't in this MX series. I, I know that Kubota is just trying to keep their cost down on these tractors and so they, you know, but but I mean even still the cost on this Kubota, this 40, uh, the, this 5200 versus the 4052 is about pretty pretty close to the same price, um, you know, but, but it is what it is. Um, you know, what I do like about the tractor is, um, you know, the, the hydraulics on the tractor, they respond really well. Uh, the, the front end loader on this MX series um, is more in line with a full-blown M-series Kubota tractor. I mean, the, the front end loader acts, acts and handles more like a, a heavier, heavier loader. Um, you know, another thing I like about uh, this, this kind of the, the model here, this MX model being between the L and the M series, um, you know, is, is, uh, is I, li I like how easy the loader is to take off. To where John Deere, you have to, you have to specifically get a, a, a different style of loader in order to get, uh, to get the quick attach uh, loader, like what's on the 1025s and whatnot. Um, these loaders on Kubota, they're really easy to take off um, and on. I, you know, I know John Deere tries to market it as Kubota is such a pain in the butt for their loaders to take on and off, but in reality, they're not. Um, and to where John Deere offers, offers a, a, a good style loader on their 4052, but um, the cast uh, iron that they offer. I mean, it's a real heavy duty loader, but you can't take it off. Um, and you have to special order the loader uh, to get one that you can take on and off. So I, I think that that's one downside um, to the uh, to the John Deere. Um, another thing is this tractor went into regen the other day, um, which if you're paying attention and you're driving the tractor when it went into regen, um, there's a little light that comes on up here and then there's another little light that will come on that resembles uh, this right here and it will have a little arrow pointing up um, to get the tractor to regen i was in the middle of i think digging or doing something all you have to do is just throttle the tractor up to about 540 and then the tractor regens you can still do anything you want uh, you know brush hogging or digging or doing loader work or whatever you just have to run it a really high idle or a really high rpm uh, to let it regen which is no big deal at all um, 
I like how responsive the, uh, responsive the full wheel drive is on this tractor as well. Um, uh, I mean, you engage it, you know, there's no backing up forward or anything like that to, to get it to go in. Um, you know, uh, one more thing that I do like about Kubota over the John Deere is John Deere has a lot of plastic on their tractors anymore. Uh, the fenders, the hood, everything seems to be plastic on them tractors. To where, uh, you know, uh, Kubota, it's a little bit more a base looking tractor, but everything is metal. I mean, this is metal. Uh, your floorboard, I mean, everything's metal. The only thing that's not metal is this, which, I mean, it is what it is. Um, but, but anyway, uh, like I said, I just kind of wanted to go over a short video here on this. Um, the backhoe, as far as the back hand, backhoe handles, I mean, like I said in one of my other videos, you're not getting a full-blown commercial backhoe, you know, um, but but as far as like what I do around um, our place here, um, you know, I mean, I just have some stumps or some water lines to dig every once in a while. You know, I don't do any major work with this thing, so it suits me just fine. I think the hydraulics on this MX-5200 um, is around nine gallon, uh, if I remember right, right, right around nine gallon a minute. Um, on the hydraulic flow which is which is plenty enough to, to operate this backhoe and it operated pretty efficiently um you know so you know like, like i said it, it will it will tackle just about any job i wouldn't recommend you know i i know that you can mount these bh92s to like a you know like that other l47 tractor or uh you know or, or one of the 4701s that they have but the hydraulic flow on i think on those are around seven gallon per minute personally um, you know, I've, I've ran, I've ran a lot of, you know, uh, large backhoes. I've ran excavators and whatnot for a long time. And I just don't think that this backhoe would be good with anything other than, you know, any less than nine gallon per minute. I wouldn't, me personally, I wouldn't want to go any less than that, but, um, you know, I, I know financially for some people, they just can't do it. But, um, anyway, uh, just kind of wanted to make a quick video here over this and uh, kind of what I liked, what I didn't like. Hopefully it made sense. Sometimes I like to talk in circles, um, you know, so ho hopefully what I've, what I've said here makes, makes some sense to, to, to some people. Um, like I said, uh, this tractor has been, so far, um, I've put, I don't know, 20 hours or so on it, um, just kind of messing around. I uh, haven't really did much actual work with it, but so far the tractor has really, really impressed me um, a lot, and I'm very happy with it. Um, I mean, I know if you look at a lot of my other videos, I have several compact Kubota tractors. Um, you know, I prefer Kubota over the John Deere compacts just for, uh, just because I think, like I've said in my last video, one of them or another, um, John Deere, I think in these compacts are selling on their name. The equipment's taking a back seat. They're putting so much plastic on their tractors anymore that, that it's, it's really more like a, a toy than than something that you would use for landscaping or, or uh, light agricultural work or, or whatnot. Um, I just don't think, I think John Deere needs to step up their game a little bit. And, and, I, and I'll give Kubota this. I mean, their, their, their metal isn't, it isn't real heavy metal. It's more like a sheet metal, but just in my mind, I prefer it over, over the plastic. Um, because like I said, over time, um, I mean, John Deere has changed their composition and their plastic up in in just the, the last few years um, because I, I know they had a lot of problems back in the past with uh, with a tractor sitting out for a few years. And I mean, you just you hit their plastic and it would just shatter. They, they've changed their composition up in their plastic to make it to make it a little bit more durable. But it it will over time it will bleach and it will um, it will be become brittle and you will become you will have problems with it. And that's, like I said, that's one thing that, that I try to stay away from in John Deere and their compacts is just the, the pure cheapness of their small tractors. Um, and, and that's not taking anything away from their, you know, their, their 5M series, their 5R series, uh, their 6M, their 6R, and, and anything above that. I mean, you're getting excellent, excellent equipment. Um, but I mean, the, these, these 5Es, these 6E tractors that John Deere are coming out with and anything really below a 5e um i wouldn't have uh personally but anyway that's just you know like i said it comes down to what people can afford i know um but you know but it, as far as quality wise and and quality is one thing that i kind of that i really try to try to keep and and try to buy is quality stuff and as far as these small compact tractors mahindra doesn't cut it for me 
Uh, New Holland doesn't cut it for me. Um, LS definitely don't cut it for me. Um, Mass Ferguson sure as heck don't do it. Uh, Case IH, you cannot find a Case IH compact in my area. Um, McCormick, they're high, you know, where are they at? You know, nobody knows, there's nobody selling any McCormick compacts. Uh, but Kubota, Kubota makes an excellent compact tractor. And anybody in the market um, should probably definitely consider Kubota for sure and do a real good comparison between the John Deere and the Kubota. Um, like I said, that's just my, my two cents. Um, hopefully this made sense for you guys. Um, if not, I'm sorry, but it is what it is. I figured I'd try to make this short video here and just try to help somebody out maybe in, in their buying process, um, try to make a decision um, or, or not. Like I said, I've, I've worked for John Deere. I've worked for Kubota uh, in the past. I've worked for JCB. I've worked for uh, Case H, McCormick. Um, I've worked for several different tractor manufacturers and um, and through all my years and, and all of the, the time that I've had with these groups, um, Kubota is, is really, has really went uh, above and beyond in my mind as far as their quality in their tractors and what you can expect from their tractors. And, and I know there's some dealers out there that will put a bad taste in people's mouth um, over these tractors or Kubota or John Deere or whatever. Um, you know, but that is the dealer's fault, is not Kubota's fault. Um, you know. But, uh, and, you know, and another thing that I don't like is John Deere is, uh, it seems like the John Deere is, is right now they're wanting, uh, they're wanting to consolidate all of their dealers, get rid of all their small guys, and just make more corporate uh, type dealerships um, right now. And that's another thing that I don't care for about John Deere um, is, is they're, they're definitely, they're, they're going more corporate with their dealerships, trying to treat them like car dealerships. Um, which that's one thing that I definitely don't like and, and Kubota still um, you know there are several dealer groups out there that, that have Kubota but most of them that I deal with um, are, are small family owned outfits and, and that's one thing that I kind of kind of want to do is is also want to support the small businesses versus large corporate outfits like John Deere um, but anyway that's uh, that's my two cents on it and, and uh, thank you and have a good day